What's up, guys? Today's episode is sponsored by Melissa Flicks Author Services. Do you write for a living and get frustrated with trying to do it all? You don't have to. Melissa Flicks offers a wide range of affordable services, ranging from book management to administrative tasks. Go to melissaflicks.com, click contact to get started. Remember to put too many words in the subject line. Simplify your life so you have more time to write. Today's episode is also sponsored by Luluru. Luluru is a clothing company that provides comfortable, fashionable, and unique clothing for everyone. The famous soft, buttery leggings are only the beginning. Luluru also has an amazing line of women's dresses, shirts, tunics, and t-shirts. Go to facebook.com slash group slash Luluru Rebecca Clark. Type in code too many words to get 20% off your first order. Let's do the show. What's up, everybody? I am Jamie Benningfield, your host. You are listening to Too Many Words, my podcast for the creative and more than slightly odd. I talk about writing, life, whatever it is that comes into my head. I share with you fine folks, and then I talk to a guest. And today I have uh, the fabulously talented Alicia Escobar on the show. She is the author of the Great Tower Trilogy and also the co-founder of Creative Alchemy, Inc., uh, which is the publisher for the magical realism anthology that my story was included in. Magic Unveiled. She also has a story in it as well, which rocks. Um, and so does her. And so does uh, her books. I'm reading the first one right now, and I'm almost done with it. And wow, definitely fun fantasy. Got some awesome war in there, and really interesting concepts. I I love the combination of um, that that she does with her with her characters, and very deep and complex and good and. Yes, I could go on and on, so pick it up. Um, but I have a great talk with her. Uh, you know, we uh, we talk juggling life and motherhood with the fictional worlds that we have rolling around in our heads, and I will have that conversation up for you in a little bit. Um, if you are new to the show, welcome. Thanks for tuning in. And if you are a regular, high five and welcome back. I will not be rambling as much as I usually do um, this week. I a uh, couple of my throat. I'm getting sick. Halloween has gotten me. I, I didn't wear a coat because I went as a as a zombie apocalypse survivor and I covered myself in costume blood. And it uh, costume blood gets on everything that it touches, even when you think it's dry. So I didn't wear my coat and it was rainy and cold. And I was wearing my Converse sneakers, and I got damp, and now I'm paying the price. But also, my brain is just, it's mush, scrambled eggs. I'm tired. I'm so tired. I'm finishing up the book, The Dystopian, this week. It's happening. I have a couple more chapters. It's all in my head. And then next week, hopefully, I can talk to you folks about something different. Uh, But uh, I'm pretty stoked. Eight weeks about 105,000 words. Super proud of the story. I'm looking forward to sharing it with the world, and my hopes are high. I am not participating in NaNoWriMo this year. It officially kicked off on November 1st. I participated in in it last year, and I got just under 60,000 words um, of a draft done during that time, and I learned a lot about just kind of heads down discipline. Even when I can't quite see something, just powering through it, knowing that I can go back to it, making notes, jumping around, using my outline helped a lot. Although a good thing to remember with your outline, and uh, this is to properly um, give credit to uh, Richard Cadry, author of the Sam Man Slim series. He's the one that said this to me and it stuck in my head, but he said, um, the last time he was on the show, he said, you owe nothing to your outline. And that's a good thing to remember because it's very easy to get, you know, bogged down trying to get your character somewhere when they want to go somewhere else. And sometimes, a lot of the time, something that I've been relying heavily on these last few weeks is just leaning into your characters, leaning into your world, trying to just shut off that 
rolling editor at inner critic and self-destructive chicken little who's running through your mind saying, this is garbage, throw it all out, stop, walk away. But, uh, so, but I know that a lot of you are participating who listen to the show. So good luck, heads down, you can do it. Uh, visit the Facebook page, Too Many Words Pod, and comment below about your progress. Share it with everybody. Because like I said, I know that uh, there's a large amount of you that are participating in it right now. And it helps <laughs> to have support um, getting those crazy thoughts out there. And another thing, you novel writers, if you are working through something, write yourself questions. Talk to yourself. I've talked about this before on the show. I've talked about it on my blog. I can't stress enough how much this has helped me. Write down your questions. Even if you're like, I think this might work, and you're kind of like, just write it down. Because if it doesn't work, you'll see it when the words are down on paper. Um, And more times than not, your mind will take you to where you need to go if you let it. Relinquish control. Let your imagination take over. And that is it. That is my rambling. After these few notes, we will be, you will be listening to my conversation with Alicia. And uh, it's good stuff. So stay tuned. Hey, Alicia, how's it going? It's going very well. How are you doing today? I'm okay. I mean, I'm in this like constant weird state right now because I'm I'm making this final push and finishing a drafting a novel. So my mind is like 80% there in this book. So the 20% that's like running the rest of my life is scrambling around like grabbing her hair. Oh, I feel you. <laughs> it's tough to juggle the two. It is. It is tough to juggle it, especially when you have so many things pop up with life. And as you can probably hear in the background, I have my baby with me, but you have to set aside a few moments for yourself to, you know, just get the writing done. I'm also drafting a story and it's like every free moment I have, I want to just get back to it because I'm so excited about it. Totally. Well, that's, it's such a, like, a, you know, it, writing a book and editing it and getting it out. It's such an epic project too. Whereas like there's, you could always be doing something for it. So like, especially when I'm extra motivated to like work on it, it's hard for me to focus on anything else. It's like, you know, having to close the computer and go to the grocery store. It's like, what? Come on. <laughs> you mean I have to stop to go eat and sleep? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Totally. I have to I have to uh, partake in regular human activities. Come on. <laughs> Gotta finish this book. That's life. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. Um, um so I am uh, I'm not done with it yet, but I am reading The Tower's Alchemist. Oh, awesome. And uh oh my gosh. And your story with the magical realism anthology, your words and the um, worlds and characters that you build, I can tell that you have a lot of fun because it's just like so much just awesomeness coming through. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, so what, what led you to writing a story about a war, uh, wizards versus uh, non- Nazi uh, warlock vampires? Um, well, the idea came as part of a writing challenge from my husband. He was um, kind of bouncing around ideas with me, and we were discussing um, the popularity of certain books. This was a few years ago, so uh, we were really into books like The Dresden Files, and he mentioned when Twilight first came out, and I had never heard of it, and he's like, it's about vampires. And I thought, well, I could do an urban fantasy uh, with, you know, vampires in it. And he sort of gave me Isabella as a character. She's um, in the profession of a spy. She's a wizard trained in alchemy. And he's like, okay, so what are you going to do with her? And I took her and... The Towers Alchemist was born, and I had a lot of fun just researching, developing her, 
And in doing that, it's funny, I learned so much about World War II, that era, <laughs> than, more than I probably ever learned my entire life. <laughs> that is a really funny part of it when you're doing research. Um, I, I did a lot of research for, um, for get, on uh, gang dynamics for one project, and like my brain is just like filled with all this weird knowledge that I would have never had otherwise. Exactly. It's part of the fun, though. I like it. And, and sadly, you know, you obviously can't shove everything in that you've learned, even though you want to. But um, I really enjoyed the things that I um, learned and just found, like, really great spots to, to add that in. And it gave, I think, a rich layers uh, to the world, you know, made it feel more real. I believe, like, one of the reviews um, for the book said that it felt real to them, that it could have happened. So that was a wonderful compliment. Yeah, that's awesome. No, well, it is. It is very, it's a very immersive world. And I, I felt that instantly, which is, you know, being grabbed right away is always a good sign. <laughs> and you are, that is being adapted into a screenplay, right? Yes. Um, well, as you probably know, um, I have a background in um, writing English um, with a writing emphasis um, from my college education. And the funny thing is that I was really into writing plays and screenplays, and I never really thought of myself as sitting down to write a novel. And so now it's switched up, and now I'm the novelist, and I'm kind of like going back to my... Um, screenplay writing roots now with adapting the story to screenplay so once i'm done with that we're going to start shopping it around and uh, we'll see what happens that's really exciting that's really exciting that's that's on i'm not there yet but that is on my bucket list i i do want to get my hands in that stuff <laughs> yeah i was uh, i went out with a friend i took a took a took a me break and i went out with a friend last night to watch uh Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. Oh yes! And uh, the 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 good the good friend that she is, right as the movie starting, whispered in my ear. She's like, "Your books will become movies one day." <laughs> and it was a it was a twenty one plus movie theater, so we had margaritas in our hand. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. Yeah, it's, it's a great feeling, and, it, and it's interesting to see your work um, translated over to a different medium. I would imagine. I I. Uh, it is always interesting because, you know, there has to be, there's always differences there because there has to be, because, you know, you're, you're dealing with a different length of time and way that you present the scenes and stuff. So, you know, in a book, there's a lot more room to like, you know, explore, you know, subplots more, or, you know, all these little details, whereas, you know, it's different. I mean, the details still need to be there and subplot, sure, but it's just, it, it needs to be structured differently. Exactly. And you can't be afraid to cut certain things because of the length, like you said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's like, you know, it probably, I mean, I haven't done that yet, but I would imagine it's similar to like, you know, the editing process of a novel where it's like, when in doubt, cut it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, it's, it's going to be tough because in your head, you're like, but this was my favorite part, or they have to understand this. And it's like, well, if it's going to be, um, you know, film adaptation, it's going to be different. That may have to be cut out entirely. Well, and that's one thing, too, that I think is interesting. Um, you know, there's a couple of book series that have, you know, or more than a couple, I guess. There's a couple that I watch that have been adapted into a television show. And... You know, Game of Thrones is really the only one that I can point to that does this, but like the, it's so detailed. Um, and I think that's a, it's a cool option for, for some, for some. It is. I, I love the detail in Game of Thrones. I just, uh, a funny thing that happened was that Luis introduced me to the book series and he gave me the first one. And I told him, wow, I really like this Ned character. And he kind of smirks and he goes, keep reading. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I just uh, learned very early on not to get too attached to certain characters because they will leave us, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> yes. Well, so many shows now. I mean, there used to be the philosophy that, like, if your favorite, if, you know, if it's your favorite character is a main character, chances are they're safe. 
but that's not the case anymore. It's not. And it's both interesting but slightly dissatisfying at the same time because, you know, as, as a reader or an audience, you want to have a bit of satisfaction, you know, with the characters or with the ending. And sometimes the writer or the artist is not going to go in that particular direction. So it's, uh, <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's interesting. <laughs> it is. Well, and I think about that too. Um, cause you know, I'm, I am obsessed with the walking dead. Mm-hmm. I watched the episodes and read the book, the comic book so many times. And I have, you know, I'm, I'm very emotionally attached to the, you know, the world, the characters and all of that. And, you know, sometimes, you know, I get really like, I'm like, Oh man. And I just get upset. But like, you know, I'm also a creator. So from the, I can also like understand, you know, like when I get a review about something and it's like, Oh, well I meant this and, or whatever. And it's interesting because there, there is definitely two sides to it. It's like, you know, as you know, the, the consumer, the, the reader, the uh, viewer, you have certain expectations and hopes. And then, you know, as the creator, you have expectations and hopes, but you also have, you know, responsibility to the storyline or other things as well. So it's, 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 so how old are your little ones? Uh, my little ones are two and eight months. Oh, wow. So, as you can imagine, I uh, am often busy playing with them, entertaining them, and sometimes, you know, they'll they'll give me a break. They'll be nice to me. <laughs> <laughs> and other days, uh, I'm kind of struggling trying to find my way, but they're, they're a good bunch, so I'm happy with them. <laughs> Well, yeah, so what, because my two are 17 months apart. Oh, wow, 17 months. So how, what's, I can't do the math, eight months and two years old is? Yeah, so they're about like a, about a year and a half apart. Okay. I was thinking of the math. I was like, that sounds pretty similar. Um, yeah, no, it's intense. Those those first three years with that age group, I love it now though because now that they're in elementary school, they they have like this like little posse, you know. Oh yeah, getting that with my older ones. <laughs> oh, you have older ones as well. That's right. Uh, how and are they are they in teens or? Uh, the oldest is ten, so um, they're kind of like in the six to ten age group. Okay. So I have six all together. Um, people oh. ask me, how do I do it? And I tell them, well, I'm a wizard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. So you have six all together. Yeah. I, I, you know, and a couple of my friends, they have, they have three or four and it's like, my hat always goes off to you ladies because I barely have two. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, oh my, wow. I mean, well, and like, you know, I have, I have three dogs, so they definitely add to it. I mean, and but two of them are over a hundred pounds. So they're significant oh. forces in the kitchen. Um, and you know, there'll be like five minute stretches where like all these little, like a m- cup of milk will spill. And then like, the, you know, the dog will get covered in the milk and then he slips. It's like this, like all these like things that happen at once. And then there's like another kid on the other side of the house. That's like just done something terrible to the bathtub. And it's like, oh. and it, it only takes like five minutes. And like, I always think about that. Like, um, a cousin of mine, she had, um, cause she had, she had multiples. So she ended up having nine under 12. Goodness. Wow. Um, and I mean, she had, she had help. But she rocked it. And, and uh, I'm always like, I always think of her because I'm like, <laughs> I got like peanut butter smeared across my face. And one of my feet is in like a, you know, in dog pee and it's only 7 a.m. <laughs> well, living the life. Huh? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm big time. But uh, so, and uh, I am really excited about, um, Magic Unveiled releasing last week. Yes, I'm so excited about it. The reviews come in have been great. I've have, seen that, and it's super exciting. Yeah, I mean, some some of the reviewers they like it, but they've been complaining 
because they want it more. But and they, they feel like <laughs> this should be a whole novel, you know? And I'm like, well, I guess that's a good sign because, you know, they're receptive to it. <laughs> yeah, I guess if their biggest complaint is wanting more, I think we all did something all right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And, um, yeah, we just had a great group uh, for this anthology, the, the stories that they brought along with them. And, and I already told you guys how you and H.M. Jones, your stories <laughs> just made me cry. I, I, re- I reread it for a second time, and I cried again. <laughs> <laughs> it's just all very touching, very moving. And I like how there are some stories that, you know, have – bits of humor and others that are a little bit more serious and emotional. And I, I like that variety and that's the great thing about getting an anthology together. Yeah. Well, I really, it's uh, I mean, you have all these different, you know, these different voices and when they're put together, you know, in a book like that, I, I think that is a really cool thing about an anthology is you have all these different perspectives on, you know, on a, on a theme subject. And it's like, you know, and, uh, our collection, I, I really, I really dig them. I'm, I'm happy HM Jones, uh, introduced me to you because, uh, I'm, it's been fun. I'm happy to be involved with it. And I love the cover. The cover is awesome. Oh, thank you. I will pass that along to Louise. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Uh, the cover at first, I wasn't sure what what we would have for it because of the nature of the stories. They're they're also different and unique in their own way, and we were wondering how how could we capture the spirit of, of everything, you know, into one um, art piece, one cover. And he decided to come up with the magician, the uh, kind of like a tarot card or um, a game card where it has aspects of magic, but modern and updated and it turned out great it just it sets the mood appropriately i feel like i was really excited when i saw it yes yes um i was i was excited as well and just um the colors in the background as well just making everything else pop in the picture so uh i really enjoyed uh, watching him create it uh i would kind of like sneak in and bother him every now and then. <laughs> How's the cover going? How's the cover going? When are you going to be done with the cover? And <laughs> yeah, he graciously put up with me and um, I'm glad um, with the final result. That's so cool. So you and your, you and your husband team up on all this stuff, correct? We do. We do. We're um, the co-founders, you know, of creative alchemy and um, we decided since we're both creatives, we're both um, producing things that it should kind of like be under one roof in the sense of uh, a business and, you know, just keep things in order. And, you know, that's how we got it started. And he does, you know, his projects, um, which I'll be helping him with soon. Um, he's coming out with a comic book soon. And that's awesome. Yes, it's going to be so cool. I believe it's um, the Black Terror Kid, and um, it looks great. It just looks awesome. And uh, he's already got um, a book published called Draw Fu, which is geared toward those of us adults who love art, love drawing, but kind of feel like we are stuck at the stick figure stage. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he kind of takes us from there and teaches us, yes, you can draw, anyone can draw, and this is how you do it. So he's he's very creative, very artistic, and um, I, I think we make an excellent team. That's awesome. That's really cool. So, and the, how long have you guys been, uh, you know, how long have you guys had Creative Alchemy? For about two years now. That's awesome. Yes. And I believe as we continue, uh, we are, you know, getting stronger, getting bigger, we're growing. And I just, I just love the positive energy that we have within Creative Alchemy, uh, from the writers that we work with to our team members behind the scenes. So it's, it's, um, you know, we, we call ourselves a micro press and sometimes a small publishing house, but you know, it, it just feels like 
a great big family to me. And that's what I love about it, that we can all get together, produce, you know, professionally, and also just chat and be friends as well. Yeah, that's awesome. It is a really, um, really cool community that you're building. I, uh, I felt it instantly, you know, like once, you know, the ball started rolling on the anthology, I got invited, you know, I was joined the Facebook group and it's really a cool group. It's really awesome. It is. And everyone is so supportive and we're always looking out for each other. And I think that's, One of the important things to have, especially as um, indie artists, indie writers, uh, it's it's tougher when you go at it all alone. And that's one thing I've learned. But when you have the connections and support of your peers, people who have certain skills that they can help you out with, or people who know this other group of people that can, you know, place you together and, and create, you know, projects, things like that. It's, it's so helpful. And, um, I'm, I'm glad that I went that route instead of thinking it's just me doing it alone independently. Totally. No. And I, uh, I, I walked it alone for a little while as well. And then as I, um, you know, just put more out there and got more involved and, you know, you start to be able to, you you network and you meet people. And I mean, that's, one thing that I absolutely love about the age of social media that we live in is that, you know, cre- you know, creatives are able to connect. I mean, I know I, I work very closely with people that I would have never, ever met if it wasn't for, you know, this Facebook event or that Twitter comment or, and, you know, these are, you know, now years in the making of like, not only do we work together, but we're also friends. And um, it's just really it's really cool that way. Um, you know, it's, it's also hard, you know, because there is so many people putting stuff out there. It's hard to, you know, get your spot, you know, carve out your little section for yourself, but it's not impossible. And, um, you know, talking to other people and working with other people also help that. And, you know, it's really important to get feedback. So, it is. It's so true. Um, things have changed since, say, you know, 2013, 2011, 2008. Uh, the landscape has changed in so many ways with uh, self-publishing and social media, getting the word out there about your work, because you're constantly in a sea of a lot of other works, you know, being pushed forward into the public. So it's like, how do you stand out from the others and get your voice heard? I'm still figuring it out. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Getting closer, I feel like. I don't know. It's also, I guess this is slightly off topic, but like, uh, you know, editing. When I first started, you know, with my very first book 10 years ago, editing was like this like emotional process where I was like, oh man, like I would beat myself up for like, you know, not nailing this or, you know, not doing details or, you know, how did that word what's that word doing there or, or whatever and now when it comes to any editing stage and I'm, I'm working with an editor on the dystopian book that I mentioned earlier and yeah. it's just so welcoming because it's like yes please help me make sense of myself <laughs> you know because you read your own words so many times and you know it starts you know uh, I believe HM Jones had said this because we're working on some short stories together and she was just like mm-hmm. you know you got to step away from it Because if you don't, your brain will just, you know, make you think that those are the words that you're reading. You know, it's like, you know, the the space away, it it does help. Even though, even, and and that goes for the creative process too. Sometimes it's really important to just walk away from it. And it seems like the worst thing to do, because it's just like, I'm walking away from it. I'm not going to do it. But your, you know, your mind does stuff in the background. Yes. You have to walk away sometimes and or set it aside and that's what I did actually with my current work in progress where I started this sometime last year and then I set it aside because I wasn't quite sure where it was going and I didn't have the underlying structure you know to support it and I thought well this is a good idea but how is this going to look like as a full-length story so I kind of set it aside 
And just now I came back to it and I'm always, I'm almost halfway through writing it and I'm very excited about it because now is the time for it. That's awesome. That's so, isn't that fun when that happens? It is. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's almost like the presence under the tree, you know, in the morning. It's like, yes, I, I this, you know, the, the project that I'm working on, certain characters have been in, you know, in my head for almost six years. And I think part of the, why it's so fun and why I don't want to do anything else is because it's like I, when you can see it it makes it so fun because you're not like, you know, you're not wondering what happens. You're just like, I know I just need to put it down on paper. <laughs> yes. That's the excitement that gets you going and that'll carry you through. I feel like that's kind of the magic of writing and the writing process where you get those bursts of inspiration and you just go for it. And but like what you said about the editing, you know, that stuff, it's all important and, you know, it'll also have its place, but what really is going to get you going and connect you with your uh, potential audience is the, the excitement and the passion that you pour into the project. Definitely. Well, and I was having trouble like not editing while I was writing for a while. I just kept falling into it. I'd be like, you know, hovering over this paragraph when I need to write more paragraphs. I was like, this is, this is not how it happens. So I actually have to write everything down on paper first. I'm too distracted on the computer. Oh yes. Yeah. And then I transcribe it. I, <laughs> you do. Yes. <laughs> and then there's the, tra the, the transcribing phase. I got to say my typing has gotten, it has been forced to be a lot faster. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I've been, I've been through that stage. Uh, just um, the self-editing, it's sort of like a little curse, I swear it is. It's just, um, you know, a, it, is a, it is kind of a roadblock, you know, to slow you down. But at the same time, you feel like, you know, I have to fix this. I'm here right now. I might as well fix it. But, um, you know, you just keep pushing through and... You know, you come back to it later. I sometimes I, I leave little notes to myself to come back to a certain place or to fix a certain thing. Um, unless it's something that is, I, I feel like it has to be fixed now, or I'll forget. Or if I forget, it'll come to back to bite me later. Then I'll go ahead and do it. But if it's something a little bit smaller, then I'll go ahead and, and leave it and then come back to it later during the um, second draft or the my own self-edit phase. Yeah, totally. Sometimes having that restraint is hard. Actually, like just yesterday, there was this like sentence and it's like, I didn't, I read it back and I didn't like the way it sounded at all. But I was just like, okay, but I will go back and take care of that. And like I did, I made a little note. I was like, I have to keep going. Cause like one thing I, you know, I know about myself is like, if I'm flowing, yeah, that's when some of the best stuff comes out. Stuff that I didn't expect elements of the character that you know just naturally you know deepen because i'm following them you know so closely so it's like that's what i want to try and reach every time so i like have this little i, I mean i have to have my phone away from me because <laughs> like even with the sound off like i can just if i can see it i want to pick it up it's weird <laughs> yes <laughs> Like I just like I can't walk past the Starbucks without getting myself a pumpkin spice latte in October. <laughs> I can't do it. It's like, oh yeah, it is time for a pumpkin spice latte. Hide your phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I have to. Yeah, I have to hide my phone from myself and uh, music. Do you write to music or do you do you prefer silence? I prefer silence. Sometimes I will write to music. Uh, but I think I prefer like an instrumental music in, instead of like listening to someone sing lyrics. So it, it depends on my mood. And most of the time you'll probably find me up at 11 p.m. <laughs> in my little corner in the living room and typing away. <laughs> Isn't there something like, don't get me wrong, I absolutely, like my children are my life, I love them, my husband the whole house. I love the whole deal, but there's just something really like magical about those periods of time where everyone's asleep, but you're not. And the house is really quiet. Like I purposely wake up early every morning so I can have 
my goal is to have two cups of coffee and read a couple of chapters of a book before anybody else wakes up. Oh, that is awesome. I need to start doing that. I, up before the rest of the household. Yeah. Well, I really started doing it once we hit like the school ages because it was like, you know, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to be able to like kind of give my kids like a nice relaxing morning. I mean, my mornings before school as a kid were just like, they were nightmarish and I was like a nervous wreck by the time I got to school. And so I, but I'm a terrible, horrible person in the morning. <laughs> Awful. I'm like a monster. I wake up and I'm just like, you know, somebody else. So like I, part of that is just like, I need to get nice before I get every, all the kids dressed and all that stuff or tell them to get dressed. They dress themselves. But I do. I like the quiet. Yeah, I, I think I do too. And it just, um, just to have those moments alone where you're just lost in your own thoughts. It's for me, it's become a blessing because I'm, I'm constantly hearing chatter, whether it's playing Sesame Street for the 50th time or uh, the kids asking me for something or, you know, tattling, um, just being able to have pure silence. Yes. It's just oh, so amazing to me. Like, I, I appreciate it so much more now at this point in my life. No, totally. Yeah, I never cared. I never cared about silence the way I do now that I'm a mother. Um, just, yeah, exactly. Just like there's this like this peaceful air. It's like, ah, oh, quiet. Nobody needs anything or I'm not trying to gauge whether or not somebody's about to break their neck on the other side of the house doing something dangerous. I don't know if you have any dare daredevils, but I seem to have one. He gives me a heart attack sometimes, but so far he's okay. We haven't had any hospital trips, so that's good. <laughs> Doing something right. <laughs> nice. Yeah, well, it's it's tough. The balance of like sometimes I just want to like you know I want to like float over them and be like don't do that. It's dangerous. Don't do that. But like also you kind of have to let them like do stuff too, which is like nerve wracking. My 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 oldest is now in third grade and I'm seeing this like big kid transformation and she's like asking me for a phone, which I think is crazy. Oh, yes. Um, but a lot of her friends and she says it and she, she's right. But yeah, a lot of her friends are starting to get phones and I'm like, what? Yes. Why are we getting phones at age nine? But it's, it's just, you know, yeah. different times, I guess, but it's like, it's intense. Um, oh, it is so intense. And I was just thinking when I was her age, I, I mean, maybe a friend could call the house phone, you know, attached to the kitchen wall or something. But, <laughs> uh, but the age of cell phones, it's like insane. And then just watching like even the little ones, the toddlers do the iPad. There are some things they know how to do on there that I don't know how to do. Isn't that crazy? I know my son, I swear he was like born with one in his hand pretty much and um yeah the stuff that he can do or like the settings he changes on that tv like sometimes if i need to do something i just i just ask him because it's like he knows how to do it and it's going to take me 20 minutes to figure it out it's you know it's crazy and it's crazy i can't imagine what it's going to be like or you know like like this generation when they're all you know in late teens and 20s like what what's that going to be like i don't know right you know, the, the, uh, the, the generation of funny cat videos. <laughs> I indulge in funny cat videos. I'm not judging. I'm just <laughs> saying it's just so, um, it's just so different. It's just crazy. It's crazy. It is. The world is changing so fast in so many ways. So, And it's an intense, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's an intense world and it feels sometimes, um, and it's always at a height for me, I guess, like as school is starting, but it's like sending, you know, my offspring out into the intense world always feels strange. It's like, yeah, that's what, you know, we have to do it as parents. Yes, we do. We're, we're, we're not doing them any favors if we keep them hidden. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Alicia, can you tell everybody where they can find out about you? Oh, yes. Uh, you can find me on Facebook. Uh, I believe my Facebook author page name is Author Alicia Escobar. And my website is AliciaEscobar.com. And I'm also on Twitter as The Gray Tower, and it's The underscore and then Gray Tower. 
And yeah, I um, you know, love feedback. I love chatting with readers, other writers, and I'm open to any further questions. So yeah, I'm I'm here. You know, people. <laughs> awesome. <find> me. <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> Um, but, uh, well, it was awesome having you on. Thanks so much for chatting. Thank you so much for inviting me. Yeah, it was fun. Good stuff. And that ends this fine show for today, for this week. A big thanks to Alicia for coming on the show. Be sure to visit her site, check out her books, and pick them up. Of course, you can find me at Twitter at me Bettingfield, the show at Twitter at Too Many Words Pod. Same names on Facebook. I'm Jamie the Scribbler on Instagram. You can read my column in the Matters of Kindness on Feminine Collective. And for everything of mine, large, small, and in between, you can go to my site, jamiebettingfield.com. Dot com And be sure to tune in next week for my talk with John Crowther, comic book writer, and it's a good one. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll talk to you next week.